Hi, this is Marina from Frogs and Frolics and I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful trick or treat bags today. Now I've got them in four variations but they're all the same bag so you don't need to fear that it's very complicated. In fact, it's totally easy. You're going to love this. You can applique a cat on it, you can applique a pumpkin, a bunny or you can make this really, really awesome princess basket. You've got for all of these the option of either lining it or not lining it. And in this case, for example, as you can see, I've lined it and that gives the whole thing a bit more body. If you are not lining it, then I would suggest that you put an extra base in to give it a little bit more of that stability. And here it's hard to see, but I've also put an extra base in. So on this one, I've used twinkly lights. Now I think these are absolutely fantastic. They come in a variety of settings, like really fast like this as well. Isn't that cool? And of course your kid can see on the inside what they have collected, right? So I think this is really cool. So make up your mind which one you want to do for all of these. You should stay on this video to just see how it's put together. Once you've done one, you won't need to watch it anymore. Pop over to the applique video if you want that explained really slowly to you. Here it's really, really fast. And then we've also got that princess trick or treat basket which shows you how to put the frill on and the little scallop. All the fabrics are available from Joann's and if you are ordering over the internet, if you could use the link in the description, I'd be really grateful. Here you can see also the Pelon Under, which is the adhesive film that we're using for the applique. The first thing to do is to print off your pattern and check the scale, make sure it's five centimeters or one inch. And then we only have to put together the front piece, so not very many this time. Usually my patterns are full of pieces and it's A, B, C, which you put together in order. You also need to put together the handle and that's basically it. Four pieces, the back, the base, the handle and the front. And of course, you've got for every one of those appliques a separate page so you can only print off what you need when you need it and you don't have to print all of them off. First thing to do is to cut it out of your fabric. You can get it out of 12 inches, 30 centimeters of felt. I am actually using a half a yard here and then I've got some left to make more. For the back, you wanna cut it out three times. So cut one out and then another one and another one. The handle, I'm actually cutting out a little bit wider because this wasn't very firm felt. And so I can tuck in one side and that gives this a little bit more stability. The first thing to do is place your pattern back over the front and then you want to mark where the base is going to go. You've got these little triangles, a snip will do as well. So you want to put those in and we of course need to do the very same with the back. You've got three pieces so I'm leaving them on top of each other to save myself a little bit of time. And I'm also going to snip that so I know that's where my base is going to go. And the base is the circle, which of course also needs to be snipped all the way around. And it's important that you do that because actually the rim is slimmer than the base. And also one thing to point out again is that if you're using a bit of a flimsy felt, you may want to cut the base twice to give it more stability. You can also put an additional base in afterwards. I cut the same out again from my lining and I mustn't forget to also mark the base and the front of course. I've also stabilized the base here by putting another piece of felt on and when you're sewing this on make sure that you do it from the felt size so that the fabric can't push. That's just simply easier. All right let's get started. We are going to put the applique on. First thing to do is to put the pelon under over the design and just tracing them through onto the smooth side of your pelon under. Then you want to cut the pieces roughly apart, not cut them out, just rough, and stick them on the underside of the fabric. Felt, of course, doesn't have a right or wrong side, so it doesn't really matter. And then you iron them on that takes about eight seconds. And we are going to mark where the nose is gonna go on our front. 
and then you can peel off the paper backing and put the nose on which then indicates where everything else has to go and you can use my little picture that I've got for all of these to simply place all the other pieces on and they are then ironed to the fabric and that's so much easier than pinning them on and then stitching them on. Once they're securely on there I will go to my sewing machine and stitch them on. Next we're going to close all of our darts and we don't want them to be pointy darts so what you want to do is when you sew them you want to really round it in almost in the same way that you have that angle on the back piece so you could take the back piece and put that over the top and actually draw it on first if you're not sure and you can see it here I'm really rounding it down that's so important for that really nice shape then again it's not a boil gown so <laughs> so we want to do the back as well we put those bits together and the clever ones amongst you will have already worked out that of course you could do six of the backs instead and for a pumpkin that might actually look quite nice and you could also top stitch these seams before you then close the side seam you can do that and then you would have a really structural pumpkin shape and what you could also do of course is put some batting I think it's called behind it and that would then really bring that shape out if you top stitched on those seams before you close the side seam but that's like you know making a pumpkin basket into a boil dress I can't help myself anyway that's a little tip you can do that but you don't have to then I'm closing my side seams as well we have that one centimeter seam allowance that I use on all my patterns and I'm closing the side seam as well and then we can iron these out and to be fair if you're doing a really quick one or you've top stitched the seams anyway you don't need to do this because it's already done um, on my bunny basket I don't think I ironed it at all and it still looked really nice so if you're like a you know a bit lazy like me but if you're really good then you want to iron out all the seams over your ironing board and then we are going to make that same basket again in the lining exactly the same way the only thing to do differently is to leave a turning gap on the side seam and then when I iron this basket what I do is I will just iron all the seams to one side because it's much much quicker and I really get bored quickly <laughs> iron them to one side they don't need to be ironed apart so like the fabric anyway this is just quilting cotton again it's from Joanne's link is in the description if you want to get it as well and then I'm going to stick my base on and now I'm just lining up those snips with each other and if you stuck to your seam allowance it will fit together absolutely perfect as you can see here and um, I'm putting quite a few pins in because of course the basket gets larger as it goes up really quickly so pleats are a problem when you put a circle in not that it really matters here and there you can see I didn't stick to the seam allowance and it's a little bit too big but even that doesn't matter you can just ease it in or or you can just sew in a pleat it doesn't matter it's a, a basket right so now I can go over to my sewing machine and sew it on and here I'm showing you a little trick I'm always using a pin to help the fabric stay in position so I hold it down and I kind of push it in with the needle so that I don't get any pleats in there I think this is really good practice if you um, you know you want to learn how to sew a round thing to another round thing to create a 3D shape. This is actually really good practice. Now I do the same on my lining and you will find that if you haven't stuck to the seam allowance on the lining actually it will make a difference. It will be harder. But like I said, it's just a basket, so if you have a pleat in there, come on, doesn't really matter. Just go for it, nobody looks anyway. And once that's done, I can turn my basket inside out. I think it's actually a really, really nice shape. Looks great. 
it's been fun to do. Do your handles. Don't forget, this is uh, an exception that I've made it wider. It's only because the felt was really flimsy. And then I'm ironing it over again. And the next step is to then top stitch on either side, large stitch length. So we want like 3.5 or 4.5, even depending on how small your stitch is on the machine. And then we stick it on and making sure that we don't twist it. We'll pin it to one side first and then turn it over to the other side and then put that one down and pin it in as well. If you have got a sewing machine that is really not very good at transporting fabric, you might want to put the handle on afterwards because the machine will get a little bit stuck on it. Now I'm going to tuck in the top bag into the lining bag and it doesn't matter where you start I've lined seams up but you don't actually even have to do that and now I pin it with pins which will lie vertical to the seam because I'm a bit lazy and I don't have to take them out while I'm sewing they shouldn't break um, and if you have a little bit too much felt you can just ease it in So now we're going to take off the plate of the machine and move your bag or basket over the arm of the machine and then you can go all the way around. And my machine is a very, very good faff machine. It's uh, the faff select and even that got stuck on this handle and I had to really push it over. So a machine that isn't that good might not handle very thick fabrics like that when it goes from slim to thicker. We're going to sew all the way around, one centimeter seam allowance. I mean, if you did foot width here, it would, wouldn't matter either. It's not really that um, pressing. Remove your pins. Once the pins are all out, I'm going to snip along the edge and that will release any tension. So when I turn it, it's gonna be nice and flat and easy to work with. And now the big moment has come. We can turn it inside out and go, oh, that's really cute. So find the bit that's the furthest away from your turning gap. That makes it easier to turn it around. And when we've got it out without ripping anything, <laughs> then um, we just need to tuck the lining into the basket. And I'm going to use a few pins around the edge. You could also iron this if you wanted to. That's also fine, but um, I just wanted to do it like that. I do it differently every time. <laughs> you know, it would be so boring to stick with just one technique, wouldn't it? And then we put that second needle a bit lower so the fabric can't rise up. back on the arm of the machine and then foot width we're going to go all the way around really long stitch length again 3.5 or 4 because that looks best and we go all the way around and that really is the bag finished already it's so cool and your kids are gonna love these and I've looked in the shops and they were quite expensive and I thought well really we can do them ourselves right anyway we're done well done now I've bought these lights from Joann's and I'm going to put them all the way around the edge. I really thought they were so super and honestly in the dark it's a little bit hard to do with the camera but it looked so spooky and wonderful. And I'm just hooking them in strategically in between the lights so just over and over and then I'm going through the lining to you know to secure it. And that's it, bag done. I hope you really enjoyed this and you're going to watch all the other videos. I've got the applique of course and then the princess one and the pattern is available as ever from frogsandfolics.com. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.